Welcome to Paper Movies, a novelization book club. I am your host, Matthew. That's right, it is my turn to do a single cuts episode. Both Adam and Jeremy have done these in the past. And now, it's my turn to step up to the mic. I have read Back to the Future, a novel by George Guype, based on a screenplay by Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to jump straight into it. Um, I'm going to read the back of the novel before I get into um, my breakdown. It says, he was never in time for his classes. He wasn't in time for his dinner. Then one day, he wasn't in his time at all. Both an exciting novel and a high-spirited adventure film, Back to the Future is the unforgettable story of a modern-time traveling teenager whose journey to the past risks his very own future when he discovers surprises he never could have imagined. Starring Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd, Lee Thompson, and Crispin Glover. I don't think it's too far-fetched to say that Back to the Future is one of the greatest films ever. It was released back in the 80s, and it is still popular to date. People love this franchise. It turned out to be a trilogy. Were the second and third film that great? In my opinion, no. That first film, though, absolute gold. Michael J. Fox plays Marty McFly, a teenager who gets sent back from 1985 to 1955, he actually disrupts the timeline. He, he interrupts the, the moment where his mother and father are supposed to meet and fall in love. And if he doesn't correct this little mess that he's created, well, he'll just disappear altogether. The timeline completely changed for the future. I think we could all agree that uh, the time machine is one of the coolest cars to ever see the screen. The DeLorean, all decked out to look so futuristic, but... You know, the classic 80s look to it. It's just so cool. I love it. Now I'm going to stop blabbering and talk about this novelization. I highly recommend that you pick up this novelization and read it. It is fantastic. I A+. Plus, I'm just going to give you the rating for it right now because why not? This is different. This is not a, just a typical review. I love this, this novelization. There are so many differences. Basically, everything is different, yet still kind of the same, if that makes any sense. If you get this book, watch the film first and read it right after you watch it. You'll be able to pick out those things. It's great. It's a lot of fun. I wrote down a huge list of all of the differences. I'm not going to give you all of that stuff because I want you to experience it. But I will give you some some of those things. Okay, I'm not going to get too heavy into it. But um, we'll start off with the beginning. It's vastly different. You know, in, in the film, we see Marty McFly going over to Doc's house, all the clocks going off. We find out that they're all synced, what, like, what is it, like 20 minutes late, and that's when Marty finds out that he's late to school. In the book, we start off with Marty in school, okay? He's sitting in social studies, not paying attention to anything that's happening, just listening to his music. We're getting into his thoughts, like his deep thoughts, his love. It's not his girlfriend, you know, she's second place, Okay. His first number one love is his music. Jennifer, his girlfriend, is of this world. His music is of the next. So what about that confrontation between Marty McFly and Principal Strickland and that phone call with Doc and Marty? It does take place. However, it is 100% different. Doc calls Marty at school. So Marty gets called into the office, takes the phone call, tells Doc, Listen, I told you not to call me here. Principal Strickland, listening in from his office... He hears the whole conversation. He doesn't really understand what's happening, but he doesn't like it. So he gives Marty some after-school detention. This also causes Marty to be late to the talent show tryouts where uh, things don't work out in his favor. The story goes on slightly different than what we got in the film, but things start to really sync up when we get to Marty going home, witnessing Biff harass his father. So now all of the main characters have been introduced for this story. George Guy put does a wonderful job displaying these characters as we would see them in the film. Like, they feel exactly the same, but we do get to see, or read, their thoughts. And that's one of those things that you just really can't get in a film unless there's, like, you know, narration going over uh, a certain scene. But we don't really have any of that sort of thing going on in Back to the Future. I mean, not only are we getting into the thoughts of the characters, but into the past, like with Doc, we learn more about his wild experiments, how he views time as spherical and unending, like an orange. I have seen this film many, many times, at least once a year. 
This go around, I picked up on some foreshadowing of events that would take place in the sequel. I don't know why I never picked up on it before. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that I actually read the novelization and it it just hit different in the novel. Um, I'm not going to get into what I'm talking about uh, of the foreshadowing. That'd be a little Easter egg for you to pick up on yourself if you don't already know it. I mean, I'm not going to give you all of the spoilers. This is such a good novelization with so many differences that I just, I can't, I can't give you everything because you have to experience this for yourself. Like I have mentioned before, the benefit of a book is that you can get into the thoughts of the characters and this novelization does that. However, you do miss out on some visualizations. I think sometimes a visual is pretty important. For example, when Marty goes back in time and he crashes into the barn over there on the, the Twin Pines farm, it's pretty similar, but it does lack the funny visuals. You know, when Marty gets out of the car and he just kind of like fumbles around, falls over, that's funny. And man, I gotta tell you that it goes completely different than from the film. It's, I mean, there are some things that are similar, but they're twisted into something completely different. Like Marty's house, I, I gotta say it, Marty's house is still there. I mean, it's freshly built. It is the model home in, in the, the film. It's a big empty lot. He hides the car behind a, uh, a big sign, not in the novelization, parks it in his own garage. It's a little weird sometimes, but man, it is so good. Oh, except for that one line when Doc is talking about how to get Marty back to the future. The power that he needs to harness into the car to get Marty back to 1985. He says he needs a lightning bolt powerful enough to stop a clock. Oh, that is the one sentence that George Gipe should have left out. And uh, actually, no, 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 no. There, there was another line that was written towards the end of the novelization that was just as bad. I'm not going to tell you what that one was, because you might you might like it, but for me it was just a little bit too hot, too over the top. Um, really tacky, a little cheesy, but um, yeah, two lines. That was the only negative about this novelization that I have. Two lines that could have been removed from the book, but they really don't matter at all. Uh, so A plus for this novelization Definitely pick it up. I love how George Guy gets into the character's thoughts, expands on things, gives us a, a wildly different perspective of this film, a different version of the film, but it all, you know, turns out the same, but the road, the pathway is just alternate. It's, it's so unique. One of the most unique novelizations that I think I have read. So pick it up, give it a read, and, you know, before we close out, I want to tell you, please rate this podcast comment on the youtube channel let us know if you are reading these novelizations if you are a huge collector we'd like to we'd like to hear about it so uh, paper movies a novelization book club over on youtube and wherever you can find your podcasts have a good one